The mysteries of ancient Egypt have been in the center of attention of scientists for several centuries. Among the numerous cultural and architectural monuments left by the vanished civilization, the most famous are undoubtedly the three giant pyramids located on the stone plateau of Giza near Cairo. Who, when and why built these cyclopean tetrahedrons? It would seem that academic science has long ago found answers to these questions. Perhaps the only unsolved problem remains the answer to the question of how they built, or rather, how ancient architects processed and moved huge stone blocks. The variants of technical solutions are offered very different, but each of them contains a lot of weak points, and all attempts of researchers to verify the theory by practice ended unsuccessfully. Meanwhile, in the second half of the 26th century, engineers and chemists have made the opening which has given a key to unraveling of technology of building of pyramids. Moreover, the independent examination of samples of a building stone completely confirmed the rightness of scientists. The mystery of ancient pyramids has been solved. It would seem that this discovery should have become a sensation and the scientists who made it could have claimed the most prestigious scientific prizes. However, everything turned out differently. The scientific world answered them with complete silence. Egyptologists of the discovery as if they did not notice, and do not want to notice it until now. Egypt can be called one of the most fertile places on the planet for historians, archaeologists, art historians, and even for tourists. Tourists, huge stone statues, ruins of ancient temples, mysterious hieroglyphics. On the walls of palaces have been stirring the imagination of explorers for hundreds of years. However, the main attraction of Egypt are the pyramids. There are more than 80 of them here. They stretch along the river Nile chain length of 50 kilometers. Dominating this ensemble of monumental structures on the Giza plateau near Cairo. Pyramids of Cheops, Chephren and Menkaua were called great and were included in the list of the so-called seven wonders of the world. The height of the largest of them, the Pyramid of Cheops, exceeds 140 meters. It consists of more than 2 million stone blocks, each weighing from 2.5 to 15 tons. Of course, it is difficult to surprise modern man with anything, even great pyramids. And nevertheless, the question, how many centuries ago people were able to build such a thing, does not give quiet sleep to scientists and today. Egyptologists have offered many variants of technology of construction of these colossi and from time to time try to check them in practice. Such attempts are known a lot. They were made by Americans, made by Japanese and can be divided into several series. The first category of attempts is manufacture of mechanisms, some wooden constructions, some huge gates with the help of which entangling a network of ropes and cables huge blocks, ancient slaves ostensibly lifted blocks, loaded them on drags with skids, and then dragged on many tens, sometimes kilometers. However, researchers quickly became convinced that from a technical point of view, all these theories are, to put it mildly, controversial. All efforts to build on such technology, even reduced and greatly simplified copies of ancient structures invariably failed. And in fact, ancient builders of pyramids dealt not only with relatively small blocks weighing a few tons, but also with real colossi, which pulled on all 500 tons. For example, the famous Sphinx Temple in Giza is made of such impressive bricks. It is difficult to imagine that the Egyptians could simply move this block from the place, and even move it, as Egyptologists claim, for tens and hundreds of kilometers. 
and this giant block lies not far from the pyramid of Chefren. Famous Egyptologist Jean-Philippe Loer in his book Mysteries of Egyptian Pyramids suggests that huge stone blocks were moved on rollers. But also this version causes big doubts. Even in our time transportation of 500 tons of stone blocks would be extremely difficult technical task. After all, what prevented the ancient Egyptians to divide them into several parts to facilitate their work? After all, as historians assure historians, in the quarries of ancient Egypt successfully cut blocks of different sizes. No less difficult question, how were these multi-ton bricks lifted? Jean-Philippe Lauer in his book criticizes one of the versions of lifting of these blocks with the help of wooden mechanisms and defends another, the version of the construction near the pyramids of earth embankments on the slopes of which allegedly dragged heavy blocks, and here in the book of Albert Carl Capicelli, Egypt. 5,000 years of civilization as the basic and the most plausible version of use of wooden mechanisms is described. Also, there is a theory that pyramids were built not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom. At first, they were cut out of solid rocks, and then they were covered with stone blocks. But even if the offered ways of construction are theoretically realizable, they, first of all, are incredibly labor-consuming, and besides, cannot answer all questions. Some ancient Egyptian architectural puzzles remain unsolved. All the stone blocks in the walls of the pyramids, both the smallest and the largest, are almost perfectly fitted to each other. To each other. The gap between some of them is not more than half a millimeter. Here too, as well as in the pyramid of Cheops, we see an ideal adjustment of granite blocks and large blocks. They come together at perfectly right angles, and the seams between them are such that it is impossible to slip even a needle into them. For achievement of such result, one diligence is obviously not enough. You need special tools and unique even by modern standards of stone processing technology. How could the Egyptians make such a fitting? Representatives of the scientific world only throw up their hands and continue to speculate about the mysterious greatness of the ancient Egyptian civilization. And in some cases it comes to ridiculous. For example, I noticed that in the Sphinx temple, one of the inner corners was made not by joining two blocks, as it is usually done in stone construction, but by making a corner in the block itself. That is, the block has a V-shaped joint, a little wrap around centimeters, five centimeters on the next wall. Imagine what it means to make such a curved block. It means you have to remove the surface of this whole block deepen it five centimeters. The idea is absolutely crazy and it does not fit into the framework of ordinary stone construction. Another question arises. Why was it necessary for ancient architects to complicate an already difficult task? It is necessary to tell that the authors of these theories realize all their untenability that is why in serious scientific books you can find absolutely, in our opinion, frivolous statements that the ancients possessed lost today almost half mystical ways with the help of which they forced huge stones to rise in the air and move themselves in space. This already belongs to the field of fiction, but I repeat, these words sound because the authors of the theory realize that, unfortunately, nothing more reasonable they can offer. In such a situation, it remains to assume that some highly developed civilizations, such as the inhabitants of the legendary Atlantis or even extraterrestrials, had a hand in creating the huge structures. And what if we formulate the question in another way, at first glance no less paradoxical? If ancient architects were not able to cut out and pile huge stone blocks on each other, then how could they still build their great pyramids? Could they have used some other construction technology? How are structures of similar scale the same skyscrapers built today? Mostly concrete, of course. If the pyramids were built today, the main building material would most likely be concrete. The blocks of the Egyptian pyramids could look like concrete, 
but the production of this building material involves the use of very sophisticated modern technologies. Take at least the manufacture of cement, the main component of concrete. At the first stage, the rock is crushed with the addition of water and turned into a liquid mass. Then this mass in special furnaces is subjected to gradual heating and complex physical and chemical transformations take place in it. After a sharp cooling, a semi-finished product, the so-called clinker, is obtained, which is again milled. The problem is that the firing stage requires a temperature of about one and a half thousand degrees. Only under such conditions the material acquires the necessary properties. It is unlikely that the ancient Egyptians could have such furnaces and therefore such concrete. But on the other hand, mankind from ancient times used something similar to concrete or cement for stone and brick construction. People realized long ago that stones by themselves don't stand well. They have to be held together with either cement, lime, or egg yolk and egg white. They hold very firmly. At different times in different countries, wax, tar, wheat flour, sheep's cheese, and garlic juice have been used in making mortar. But can such ingredients be used on an industrial scale? And not to bind the blocks, but to make the blocks themselves. Millions of blocks. So concrete is out? Or does it? The French chemist, professor of the University of Bern, Joseph Davidovitz, in the middle of the 26th century, developed a method of obtaining the so-called geopolymer concrete. The use of complex modern technologies this production does not require. Any crushed rock can be used for its production. The concrete quickly hardens at room temperature and turns into an artificial stone. Stone. Currently, this technology is successfully used by American and European manufacturers. The power of Davidowitz's discovery is that he proposed to use a long-known physical phenomenon, adhesion, to create artificial stone. Adhesion, from the Latin adhesio, the adhesion of dissimilar liquids or solids where their surfaces come into contact. Davidovic suggested that his discovery was something that could have been known to ancient builders, including the builders of the Egyptian pyramids. It was Davidovic who put forward a bold hypothesis. The pyramids and other known structures in Egypt are not stone at all, uh, but concrete. To make geoperimeter concrete, you do not need high temperatures, high pressures, or modern technology. All that is needed is to know the exact ratio of chemicals that are mixed into the composition. Joseph Davidovets identified 13 components of the building material of the ancient Egyptians. It turned out that all of them literally lay under the feet of builders. For example, sodium carbon dioxide is available in large quantities in local deserts and salt lakes, and mud from the Nile River contains aluminum oxide. To this day in Cairo, People sit on the embankment of Silt Nile, which is not just clay, but a mixture of iron hydroxides, aluminum and other substances, including organics, that stonifies when dried to a true stone-like state. It's an excellent binder. Look, they've made a wall. It's not burnt bricks from Nile silt or just from the earth. The binder is needed to make artificial stone out of hard rocks like granite or diarium. But you can do without any binder if you use soft rocks, which can be ground to a very fine powder without much difficulty. It is possible to take any rock, crush it to a certain size, and then 